is some news. We've got actually a little bit of merger discussion to have here, I think, as we uh, zoom in on a couple stocks. Intel down 3% is certainly not helping the market, Renita. It hasn't been a hero by any means, but it doesn't help when you have a major chip company continuing to stumble, basically, with every step. And it's down because of its failed acquisition of Tower Semiconductor, an Israeli chip maker. Now, while the two did mutually agree to discontinue that $5 billion acquisition, it came only after Chinese uh, lawmakers, Chinese regulators, refused to actually approve it. Now, initially, they entered into this agreement in February of last year and August 15th was the deadline. So now Intel will pay Tower a reverse termination fee of $353 million. Now for Intel, this complicates the CEO's turnaround efforts. Now Tower was supposed to handle the contract production of older generation chips, and then Intel was going to handle or build up its own contract chip making business around the more advanced chip manufacturing. And so if Intel would have been able to buy Tower, that would have significantly brought that to fruition, right? But there's a larger implication from this failed acquisition. Now, the fact that Chinese regulators failed to approve the transaction showed just how much the U.S.-China trade tension, those are disrupting plans for some major American companies. And because of the timing, this definitely shows through. It comes after the White House applied more pressure on China's chip industry. So it's hard to tell what more could come out of this type of situation. But for now, we know that this acquisition will not happen. Yeah, and uh, paying up for that uh, misstep and a pretty sensitive uh, company generally over the last year as it's fallen behind some of its major peers and the big growth potential of NVIDIA and others not finding its way into the Intel story, but it still has been up and it still has rallied. And that's where I do think it matters here, Kevin, because ultimately this market, as you put it, needs something good from the tech space in particular, because valuations have moved up. And I feel like this move in Intel gives us uh, a reason to keep our eye open for basically any um, imperfect news in the group. Maybe we have been priced to perfection, as they say in this rally. Yeah, I think if you're this sector of the U.S. economy and you're looking for Intel as the catalyst for going forward, you may be setting yourself up for some disappointment there because I don't know, you know, even though the size and the, the sheer scale of what Intel offers, not sure they have the chops right now like NVIDIA and AMD does to, t to get to the next level. And in the history of Intel, that's been dealing with a lot of bad news lately, this is just another ding in the armor of Intel. They got to pay $353 million uh, breakup uh, uh, for, for the deal. You know, that's not great. And, you know, the stock is heavy based on this, but this is just another attempt at Intel to get relevant that's failing, Oliver. Yeah, I have to say too, uh, I said this morning as well, I feel like at a certain point, the market's gonna uh, really have to uh, hold Gelsinger to the fire here to some extent, because you know, when you're dealing yeah. with big deals right now, and especially China companies, you're more than likely gonna run into some extreme resistance. Thanks, Kevin and Renita.